Good morning. Welcome to the Cloud Church. My name is Robert Breaker, missionary evangelist to the Spanish and English speaking people. And what we're going to do here is we're going to start a teaching through the Bible, verse by verse. There's no greater or better way to teach the Bible than going verse by verse, reading it together and commenting on it, but not just commenting because that would be our opinion. We're not interested in our opinion. But also saying, okay, this verse says this. Is there another verse that says the same thing? Or this verse speaks about this subject or this topic. Where in the rest of the Bible does it talk about that topic? So when you study the Bible verse by verse, you actually learn more of the scriptures than if you were to listen to sermons that are on topical things. Uh, the greatest way in the world to learn the Bible is teaching verse by verse. Sadly, there's very few churches that do that. When's the last time you went to a church where they taught you verse by verse from the Bible? I've only been to about three that I can remember that actually had Bible studies where they went verse by verse through the scriptures. I was very blessed to go to a church that taught the Bible verse by verse. My wife as well was very blessed to go to a church where her pastor goes verse by verse through the Bible teaching in Sunday school. And he's actually, her old pastor is actually in the book of Genesis. And he, he is very thorough. I think it's been three, four years now he's been going through verse by verse in the book of Genesis and he might have made it to chapter 3. <laughs> he believes in the law of the first mentioned and, and how you look at this is mentioned the first time in the scriptures. Now, because it's mentioned once there, let's look at all the other mentions as well. And that's what he does is say, okay, here's the first time that's mentioned in the Bible and here it is in the rest of the Bible. So he goes slow, but it's a blessing. I could just sit and, and listen to that man preach for hours and hours and hours. And so if you're ever down around the Sarasota area, you need to look up that church that she goes that her parents go to it's a great church a good preacher his name's robert robert young if you can find that in sarasota florida cannot remember the name of the church for the life of me right now but you could look up robert young good bible believing church down in sarasota florida teaching like this verse by verse through the scriptures okay so what we have now is the first thing i want to do is just give you an introduction this is going to be just basically an introduction we already have on our website, when you scroll down, it says Rightly Dividing and Studying Paul. You need to watch that video first. It shows you how to rightly divide the scripture. I'm going to show a little bit of that now, but it's more in detail there. Because you can never, ever understand the Bible till you understand where in the Bible we are. A lot of people read the Bible, they think everything in the Bible is written directly to them. Well, the Bible is written for us, but not all of the Bible is written to us. You've got to understand that. Let me, let me just basically show this up here, and I hope you can see it. What I'm going to do is just going to put a little kind of a map of the Bible. I uh, was hoping one day to be able to pull this out. Let me pull this out first. This is a, a chart of the Bible. It is very long, very complicated, very complex. <laughs> this was done by a church up in uh, Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama, good Bible-believing church, and a man named Vernon... Let's see, he's got his name on here. Brother Vernon Hansen made this map, and a lot of it he took from Clarence Larkin's work on the greatest book of dispensational truth in all the world. Well, I translated this into Spanish in Honduras as a missionary. And uh, you can see it's longer than me almost, but it shows the entire Bible laid out in a fashion and a form where we can all see it and read it. I love Bible charts. I love Bible maps. If you want to learn the Bible, study verse by verse. And like I said, that book by Clarence Larkin, the greatest book on dispensational truth in all the world by Clarence Larkin, is a great work to get that will help you study the scriptures and see the different dispensations. But basically, it's like this. The Bible starts in the book of Genesis and tells us about Adam. And God created Adam. From Adam to Jesus Christ is about 4,000 years, almost to the day. And you say, how do you know that? Well, actually, the Bible actually tells us the genealogy and it goes through the scriptures and says so-and-so was born and such and such a time and died and if you actually go through the, the genealogy you'd find there's about 4,000 years from Adam to Jesus Christ so you go from Adam to Jesus now in here we have we have other people we have Abraham I'll just write Abe to shorten it then you have Moses well God gave unto Moses what's called the law and under the law, people were saved by what they did. Under the law, it was works. You can't read the book of Romans and the other books of Paul without seeing that 
He says, he that liveth under the law, liveth by those things. He doeth those things. It's a do gospel under the law. You're saved by doing something, by keeping the law. But after Jesus Christ came and died and rose again, there began a time period called the Age of Grace, which is also what we call the Church Age. This is where we are living today. We are right now, as I do this video, it's the year 2014. In 2014, we're here waiting for the rapture of Jesus Christ. After the rapture, there's a time called the tribulation. And we don't have time to go into that today, but you should be familiar with a future time period in which the Bible says the devil will reign. It says seven years. It's a, it's a missing week in the book of Daniel. So seven-year tribulation. Others say, well, it's only three and a half. And they said three and a half left, and over here in this time period, it's three and a half years. So the tribulation halfway through here, it went one half of it. And then over here, it's only three and a half. That'll be the last half. I don't believe that. There's some verses in Revelation that make that look not true. But this time period here, something happened. And in this time period, it was the Jews preaching to other Jews. And we'll get to that in a second. Because Jesus, when Jesus came... Jesus says, I am come not but to the lost sheep of Israel. Jesus Christ came to the Jews. And he used Peter and the apostles, and they started the church. But over here in the church age, we have Paul. Now they preached the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, but God used Paul to go to us Gentiles. So there's a difference between Jews and Gentiles. A Jew is someone that's born a Jew, or someone that became a proselyte to the Jewish religion of following the law. That was a Jew. A Gentile was someone that was born like a pagan, that was not a Jew and didn't follow the law. It's that simple. Now in the church age, there is no Jew or Gentile in this period. The Bible teaches, you're a part of the church. And that's a verse we can look at later. We've got lots to teach. But right now we want to go verse by verse through the Bible and look at that. But I want to start verse by verse through the books of Paul. And so here we have the books of Paul, which are the heart of New Testament doctrine for the church age. And see, I started by saying there's people that read the Bible and don't know where they are in the Bible. A lot of people today read the Bible and they think, I've got to keep the law of Moses to get to heaven. If you believe that, you have not studied or read the rest of the Bible. Because the rest of the Bible teaches us that Jesus Christ is the end of the law to all who believe. The law was abolished through the cross. The Bible says we're no longer under the law, but under grace, is what the teaching of the scriptures say. So if you want to live under the law, you're lost. Because you're denying Jesus Christ and what he's done for you. There's other people that want to live in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And that's right here. And all those books take place right here. And look at that. Before Jesus died. You see, the Bible says the gospel is Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So you don't get to heaven unless you trust the gospel. And when does the gospel start? Well, he had to die before you could preach the gospel and be buried and rose again. So these books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they're actually still Old Testament until Jesus dies in those books. And I say that because a lot of people like to go to Matthew and get their doctrine. Over here, we have the book of Acts. The book of Acts starts here, and actually the book of Acts is still going today. But a lot of people, they go read a little bit of Acts and they say, oh, we're saved by water baptism. I'm sorry. Acts is a transitional book. It starts with the Jews, but then the Jews reject Jesus Christ, and then it shows us the Apostle Paul going to the Gentiles with salvation. Over, we have also another book, the book of Hebrews. There are three books on the Bible, Matthew, Hebrews, and Acts, that if you don't rightly divide the word of, script, of Scripture, the word of truth, you will break your neck in these books. And you'll end up going to hell believing false doctrine because you haven't rightly divided the word of truth. You see, our doctrine comes from right here. And unless you get your doctrine from today, where we live in the church age, you're going to get doctrine that was written to someone else in a different time period. And you end up learning the Bible 
wrongly. You're going to be wrongly dividing the word of truth. You're going to have a false gospel, which isn't the gospel for us today. You say, what's the deal with those books? Well, the book of Matthew is actually the Old Testament still until Jesus dies. So everything you read in the book of Matthew is still Old Testament. And a lot of people don't think about it. But when Jesus is preaching, Jesus said, I came not but to the lost sheep of Israel. So when he's preaching in the book of Matthew, he's speaking to the Jews. And he says, if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off. If thy left eye, right eye offend thee, pluck it out. For it is better to go into life maimed than into hell fire and things like that. What was he talking about? Jesus was preaching a coming kingdom in the future in which he would rule and reign. You see, after the tribulation, the Bible says Jesus comes back in the battle of Armageddon, and over here we have what's called the millennium, the millennial reign, 1,000 year reign of Jesus Christ. So when Jesus came preaching, he preached the gospel of the kingdom. He preached that salvation for that time period, because this time period here was a parenthesis. This could not have taken place if the Jews had accepted Jesus as their Messiah. Had they chosen Jesus as their Messiah, there wouldn't have been a church age. There would have been seven years here of tribulation, and then Jesus would have come in his kingdom. A lot of people don't understand there's two kingdoms in the Bible. There's the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, and they're very different. One's a spiritual kingdom, one's a physical kingdom. Jesus came preaching the physical kingdom, but because the Jews rejected, we're now in the spiritual kingdom, the kingdom of God, the kingdom in which... You must be born again, Jesus said. Paul said you must be begotten. When you're saved, you're begotten, Paul says. So, here we are now in the church age, and we're actually toward the end. We're about right here. We are just minutes or hours or months before the tribulation, before the rapture of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, according to the Bible, you have to rightly divide the scriptures. Well, a lot of people don't do that, and they hang their necks in the book of Matthews. They try to believe that salvation is by works. Because Jesus did say there's some things you should do to get saved. But he was talking to the Jews for this period out here. Hebrews, the book of Hebrews is written to who? Hebrews. If you're a Jew, you're a Hebrew. I don't understand how people can read the book of Hebrews and think it's written for us today. It's not. It's written to Hebrews. Now the book of Hebrews has some great things in it about the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. And we are saved through the blood atonement. So there are many, many things in the book of Hebrews that are written to us that are great. But then there are some things in the book of Hebrews that are directly uh, against the writings of Paul, even though Paul wrote it. What is it? Well, Paul says someone can lose their salvation. Two times in the book of Hebrews does it say that someone can lose their salvation. But we today are told time and again, over and over and over by Paul, that you can't lose your salvation. So, does the Bible contradict itself? Of course not. If you see that there's different time periods in which the Bible is written, and until you find where you're living, and you find the doctrine to you, you will be very confused in reading the Bible. Now, the final one is the book of Acts. The book of Acts is a transition from the Jews to the Gentiles. And there are five different ways that someone got the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. And it finally ends up there's one way to get the Holy Spirit. And that's through the preaching of Paul of the Gospel. And what is the Gospel for the church age today? It is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. It is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is salvation by grace through faith in what Jesus did for us. His finished work, His blood atonement. Finished work. Until you believe, salvation is by grace through faith. Salvation is by trusting in what Jesus Christ did. In whom you have also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, Ephesians 1.13. So you must trust in the gospel to be saved. And when you believe, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. Now let's start in Romans chapter 15, and let me just show you this difference real quick. Because there is a difference between the ministry of Jesus and the ministry of Paul. Jesus went to Jews, and Paul, it says in Romans 11, was the apostle to the Gentiles. Now, there are some people that say, well, Paul only went to Gentiles, and Peter over here only went to Jews. We know that's not true. In, in Acts chapter 10, Peter went and preached to a Gentile named Cornelius. But, 
we do read the scriptures and we do see that Peter cared more about Jews and he went more to the Jews than the Gentiles. Now we know Paul did not only go to Gentiles. Just about everywhere you read in the book of Acts where Paul goes to a different town, the first thing he does is march right into the synagogue and start preaching to the Jews. So it's not correct as some of these hyper-dispensationalists, as they're called by some people, will say, oh well, Peter only preached to Jews and Paul only to Gentiles. That's ridiculous. Peter preached to Jew and Gentile. But he went more to the Jews. He wanted to hang around the Jews. He was even rebuked by Paul for being too Jewish and not preaching the grace of God correctly. Paul went to Jew and Gentile. And eventually he said, from henceforth I go only to the Gentiles. But he still went to some Jews after that. But it doesn't matter who went to who. What matters is what do we preach today and what is the gospel of salvation for us today. We are right here and for us today it's through Paul. And that is why we are going to start verse by verse through the books of Paul in order of when they're written. It's not just it's one thing to just read the Bible and read it all the way through and that's great. I recommend you do that. But you know what's neat is when you actually read it in order of when it was written. And the King James Bible is in order of a certain order and I should teach that someday. The order of the King James Bible because it's amazing how the order of the books in the Bible show us this exact thing that I showed you. That the way they're written show the order of a pre-tribulation rapture and a premillennial stand. The King James Bible is in order of that way. But the order of the writings of Paul are like this. So what we plan to do in this teaching is as much as I can just teach verse by verse through the Bible starting with the first book of Paul to the last book of Paul. So let's look right up here. I hope I wrote these big enough to be able to see, to be able to be seen. But in the Pauline epistles, the first one written was the first Thessalonians. It was written in about 49 AD. Paul wrote second Thessalonians in 52 to 54 AD. Galatians was written 57 to 60 AD. 1 Corinthians was written 57 to 58 A.D. 2 Corinthians was written in about 60 A.D. Romans was written 58 to 60 A.D. Ephesians was written in about 62 A.D. Philippians 62 to 64 A.D. Colossians 64 A.D. Philemon 64 A.D. Hebrews. Now I believe Paul wrote the book of Hebrews. If you read chapter 13 you can't deny it. But I don't believe he wrote it when people say he did. I believe he tacked on the last chapter in around 64 AD. I believe he probably wrote Hebrews first. And we can prove that. There's a lot of teachings that I could give on that. I think the Bible is super clear on that. I don't see how people can miss it. That's another teaching for another day. So the book of Hebrews. Now, Titus, 65 AD. The book of 1 Timothy was 65 to 66 AD, and 2 Timothy was 66 to 60. 8 AD. So these are the epistles of Paul, which are the doctrine for the church age today. The best way to learn the Bible is to go verse by verse through the scriptures. And what better way than to go in order of when they were written by Paul? You say, well, what do you do with the rest of the Bible? I read the rest of the Bible. I just make sure I understand that the rest of the Bible was written in a different time period to different people. But I also understand there were some prophecies given that can apply to today that did apply to the time of Jesus. So you can't throw the whole Bible out and only keep Paul, which is what many people accuse people of, that, that preach Paul. They say, oh, you only read Paul and you don't read the rest of the Bible. That's a lie. We read the entire Bible, but we rightly divide the Bible. We rightly divide the word of truth. And you must understand that Moses wrote to Jews to the law. Jesus came, he finished the law. We're no longer under the law, but under grace. We're not saved by works, we're saved by faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Someday the rapture will come. Then the tribulation will take place, which the Antichrist will rule and reign for seven years. But then Jesus returns at Armageddon, and in a thousand years He will rule and reign. Read the book of Revelation. So, we read the Bible, but we rightly divide the Bible. Where are we today? We're right here, slap dab at the very end of the church age. So what is our doctrine for today? What are the books that are written to us to show us how to get to heaven? They're the books of Paul, the Pauline epistle. Let me, let me just show you that first. Go to Romans chapter 11 and verse 13 first. 
Romans 11, 13 says, For I speak unto you Gentiles. All right, the Apostle Paul is speaking. He says, I speak unto you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the Apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. So the Apostle Paul says, I am the Apostle to the Gentiles. And he magnifies his office. So, our Apostle today is Paul. You know what's funny? It's very interesting that probably the biggest church today that says they're Christian that are all over the world and, and are centered in one gigantic area, which at one time was the center of paganism, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's Rome. The biggest Christian church in the world today centered in Rome, the center of paganism, is a certain church that teaches, no, it's not Paul, it's Peter. They actually say that their first leader, which they call a pope, was Peter. Well, you know, you got a problem. If you read the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Peter is always opening his mouth and inserting his foot. He's always saying the wrong thing. And whenever he gets started, he's preaching to the Jews. And But yet, he's always, before he gets right and is starting to preach what God told him to, he's always being rebuked. He's always wrong. Why would you want to follow somebody that's always wrong? <laughs> now, after Jesus died on the cross, Peter got right. God had Peter preach to the Jews, but then Paul came along, and God told Paul to preach to the Gentiles. Now, if you're a Gentile, which most people are from Rome, then why don't you follow Paul? The old saying is, you're, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. Yeah, because God chose Paul to give us the preachings for the New Testament for the doctrine of the church age. So that gigantic, huge church that claims to be a Christian church has the wrong foundation. They're trying to force Judaism into Christianity, and they're trying to make Peter the first teacher. When the Bible says, our apostle is Paul. Now you can follow the Bible, or you can reject the Bible. It's up to you. But I choose to follow the Bible. Now, with that stated, let's go to Romans chapter 15. In Romans chapter 15 and verse 8, here's what it says about about Jesus Christ, what he came for. Jesus of his own mouth said, I came not but to the lost sheep of Israel. And Paul tells us in Romans 15, 8, Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God. Who are the circumcision? The Jews that have been circumcised. To confirm the promises made unto the fathers. So Jesus Christ came only to the lost sheep of Israel, to the circumcision. He was a minister to the circumcision. Now, Paul makes a contrast between Jesus and himself. And he makes it in the same chapter in verse 16. So let's look at what Paul says in verse 16. Paul says that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. So you have a difference. You have Jesus coming only to the Jews. And when Jesus came, he was preaching the gospel of a kingdom. He was preaching to the Jews this. Now, if you know anything about Judaism, you know this. Way back here in the book of Genesis, there was a promise made. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. And that promise was made of a promised seed. That one day this promised seed would come. All the Jews throughout history have always remembered this promise from God of a seed. And to them, that promise was the promise of their Messiah. And the Messiah was the anointed one, the one that was chosen of God. Moses came along. And they said that Moses was a type of that one. But that he said he's still coming. The Messiah is coming. Jesus Christ is the Messiah of the Jews. Yet the Jews don't believe it. There was a very, very big, famous rabbi who died a couple years ago who on his deathbed, he said it was revealed unto him the name of the Messiah, and it was Yeshua, or Jesus. So God is starting to come back to the Jews and show them, hey, you guys killed your Messiah. If you are a Jew and you're watching this, you need to realize Jesus Christ died for your sins. He's your Messiah. But you know, that sounds foreign to a, to a Jew, because most Jews, in their thinking, is the Messiah comes for one reason. He comes to set up a kingdom to rule. So when Jesus came to do that, and then he died, the Jews said he couldn't be the Messiah, he died. 
Well, he died, but he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus came for two things. Number one, to die for all of our sins, and then to reign or rule. So the first time he came, he came for the cross. He came to die, and Jews don't understand that. The next time he comes back, he comes for his crown. So Jesus came to die on the cross to pay for the sins of the world. When he comes again, he'll come for his kingdom. But you see, this was hidden from the Jews. They didn't see the sufferings of Jesus, that he was to come and to die. Yet it's in the, it's in the Hebrew Scriptures. Isaiah 53, you cannot deny that's Jesus Christ. It pleased God to bruise him. So, the Jews looking for their Messiah were looking for a kingdom in which they would rule with their God. But yet, he came and he died, and they chose to reject his rising again and believe, oh, he didn't rise again, he was just some man that lived and died. And to this day, most Jews reject Jesus Christ. That's sad, because Jesus wants to save both Jew and Gentile alike. But to be saved, it's through the gospel. What is the gospel? The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And some of you might not like this, but it's true. Did you know that Peter preached that same gospel? He did. You can't read the book of Acts without hearing Peter coming along and saying, Him hath, did ye sl slew, uh, uh, this man ye slew. He's talking to the Jews, and they say, he, You killed this man, but God raised him again. So Peter was preaching the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to the Jews, and they hated it. Round about Acts chapter 8, they stoned Stephen. That was the final nail in the coffin. Chapter 9 mentions Paul. So the Jews rejected Jesus, and God said, All right, I have a contingent plan. I have another guy here that's going to come along and preach the gospel to the people over here, the Gentiles. And you know, it's prophesied in Scripture that God would go to the Gentiles and take them the good news or the truth. So, in order to rightly divide the word of truth, we need to know how the Bible's written, how it's laid out. That's why I made this gigantic, gigantic chart in Honduras as a missionary and taught the Bible from this chart. And there's so much here. But in an overview, in less than 20, 30 minutes, in an overview, you can pretty much explain the whole Bible. And that's what I've just done. The Bible's written throughout history. There's only 7,000 years of history according to the Bible. There's not millions of years as scientists would have you believe. Seven is the number of completion. God does everything in sevens. So, this is the entire Bible laid out, and where are we today? We're right here, in the church age, under the ministry of Paul. If we lived before this time, we would have been under the ministry of Jesus. If we'd lived here, we would have been in the ministry of Peter. But we're under the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, through Paul. And Paul points us to Jesus for salvation. You see, there are a lot of people that say, well, I don't want Paul, I'll just come to Jesus. If you come to Jesus outside of Paul, you can't be saved. I hate to say that, but it's true. Because Jesus came to the Jews, and we just read the verse that he was a minister of the circumcision for the truth. But Jesus said, but, uh, but Paul said in chapter six, uh, 15, 16, that I am the minister uh, to the Gentiles of the gospel of God that the operating up of the Gentiles might be acceptable. So, you have to come to Jesus today through the preaching of Paul. And Paul points us directly to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus preached to the Jews about the kingdom. But when Jesus died and they rejected him, he said, Paul, go preach to the Gentiles, not about this kingdom. Preach about me. Preach about what I did for them in dying for their sins and being buried and risen again. And preach to them about the rapture when I come and take out the church. Tell them about the tribulation that's going to come and the Antichrist. And Paul actually in these two books talks about the Antichrist. Talks about the falling away. Now, the Bible teaches this, and I'm going to throw this in, that in the last days the Bible says there will be a falling away. We're going to get to that when we get to First and Second Thessalonians. And then it talks about the Antichrist coming. What is the falling away? Well, the falling away is called apostasy. And according to the, uh, I'm thinking Spanish here, it's going to, okay, apostasy, put it in English. The Bible teaches that in the last days of the church age, there's going to be a falling away, which is apostasy, which means that people that once believed, once preached the truth of the gospel of salvation through Paul, will begin preaching something else. Now you look at the history during this time of the church age, and you see something, when that started, Paul turned the whole world upside down, the Bible says. 
The whole world was turned upside down through the preaching of Paul because he preached the truth and God bore witness to it. And just everywhere, all over the world, people got saved. But then this other church came in and took over, said they were the church of God, but they said Peter founded their church. And instead of allowing people to follow Paul, they started persecuting people that followed Paul. And we went through what's called the Dark Ages, and it wasn't until about the 1500s that, that the gospel started being shown forth again. In the 1500s, salvation by faith, justification by faith, Martin Luther came out and said, Wow, this is, been, this is salvation. It's by faith in what Jesus has done. He got saved reading the book of Romans, a book written by Paul. And then as time went on, people began to have the Reformation and great knowledge and learning, and they'd read the Bible, and they understood. And 1800s were probably the most gospel-saturated time in the entire history of the world. Missionaries went out left and right in the 1800s. The whole world heard the gospel of the preaching through truth. David Livingston, famous missionaries, David Brainerd. People would go everywhere taking this right here, the gospel of first... I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. And here we are in the year 2000. What happened? Well, in the late 1800s, early 1900s is when the apostasy began. People starting to say, no, the Bible's not real, the Bible's not true, no, God's not... The Bible has errors and mistakes, and oh, the Bible says this, but science says this, and, and people steadily to this day have been falling away from the preaching of the truth. And they preach another gospel. So many people used to preach this and know this. As a matter of fact, the early Christians over here, you know what they were called? There were all different names of the early Christians, but one of the names was Paulician. The early Christians were called Paulicians. They were called Cathari. They were called Waldensis, Albigensis. There were many different names. The Donatists. There were many names of the early Christians. And they all believed in salvation by grace through faith. And yet this other church from Rome came along and said, Oh, they're heretics. And Rome said, Yeah, we're founded with Peter. And they're Paul. And there was a great war. Peter versus Paul. Peter versus Paul. Well, which side are you on? Are you side of the church that persecuted and murdered many millions of Christians? You see, this church in Rome over here, I'm going to erase them. <laughs> I don't even want to look at that word. This church in Rome over here started what they called the Spanish Inquisition. 1500s, began to 1600s, began to murder and kill, actually started in the 1400s, people. For what? What sin did the people have? They said the salvation's not through the church. It's through faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. You must understand how to rightly divide the word of truth. And the only way to rightly divide the word of truth is through understanding that today, the ministry for us today is through Paul, the Pauline epistles. So with that stated, we're going to start Bible verse teaching, verse by verse, through the Bible, starting with the book of 1 Thessalonians, going verse by verse through the entire Bible, through Paul. And I hope this will be a blessing to you. Because there's many people out there who claim to be Christians who read the Bible. And yet, they're stuck in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Or they're stuck in James or First or Second Peter. And they're not going to Paul. And they're preaching things that Paul never preached. For example, they preach you can be saved, but you can lose it. Paul never taught that. Salvation isn't through losing it. Salvation is eternal life. Either it's eternal or it's not. And Jesus said, I give unto you eternal life when you believe. So if God gave you eternal life, that's life that's eternal. That means it's forever. Now, if he takes that back, God's an Indian giver. I can't tell you how many people, I mean, evil emails and people with angry phone calls. No, you can lose your salvation. And it's because they don't rightly divide the word of truth. They teach that you can lose your salvation in another time, from a book from another time, written to another people to another time, you won't find in Paul's writings that you can lose your salvation. According to Paul, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise when you believe. So it's so important to rightly divide the word of truth or you're going to end up in false doctrine. And the way to end up in the correct doctrine is rightly divide the word of truth and realize it's through Paul that we have the doctrine of the truth. So if you're watching this today, I hope this has been a blessing to you. Um, hopefully on the website what we plan to do is have this up on top as a first introduction to the verse by verse study through the epistles of Paul then under that as we go we'll put the next one and the next one and however far we get we'll put the verse there you know 1 Thessalonians 1 1 to 
what, one eight, or however long we get, you know, as we go down. And there's no greater way to learn the Bible than verse by verse. And I would encourage you to come and learn the scriptures. And I would encourage you to, to, to start a Bible study with others. Or tell others to come and learn the Bible. 